Now, how do we break this conditioning? Likes and dislikes, prejudices, people around you are, are of different nature. Gunguneshu vartante, as the person's mind has been trained and cultivated, would act like that only. Like Sri Krishna Bhagavan in Gita says that those who have a pure mind, their thoughts, actions, words will be pure. Those who have a rajasic mind, full, full, full of anxiety, agitation, anger, very, very ambitious, they will behave, act, talk um, in that way. Those who are tamasic, they have more inertia. So, liars, cheaters, deceivers, um, lazy, and always ready to steal from somebody, snatch from somebody. Um, very violent. So how a person is going to behave depends upon the way his or her mind was cultivated, or should I say conditioned. Say I am not liking, say if I am not liking my own behavior, if, although it's very difficult, everybody loves themselves, so they love whatever they do. It might be the nastiest thing, but still they love. So to have the understanding of what's good for me, one has to understand the basic nature of a tamasic or rajasic or a sattvic person. And in detail, Sri Krishna talks about it in chapter 16, in chapter 17, and uh, it talks about the different um, sattvic, rajasic, tamasic food, and if you eat this type of food, it will increase either your sacredness or anger and cruelty in you. And if you, um, like what time you get up in the morning, even that defines you. Those who sleep uh, past the sunrise, tamasic. Those who wake up at the sunrise, rajasic. Those who wake up an hour and a half before sunrise, then sattvic. Now if we go as per the nature's um, cycle of your circadian rhythm, then your waking up and sleeping should coincide with the sun. Uh, well, for Bharata I can say that, but sometimes if somebody is in like uh, Norway, Sun is down only for an hour or two. I can't talk about that. So they have to go by the time. But if he, if we are in a Bharat, then I can surely say that go by sun. Um, like west coast of US, even the east side is more or less has a, not too late sunrises. The sunsets might be different. But the thing is... Um, just look around the birds. When do birds sleep? Technically speaking, that should be your time to sleep. But that is your time to party. That's your time to visit relatives and friends. That's your time to boogie, dance. And if you have taken your dinner late, and if you have been dancing two hours, three hours in the night, even after coming back, you can't sleep because the body is so excited, the sympathetic system is on. To sleep, you need your parasympathetic system to be on. And humans have ruined their autoimmune system also. That's why they can't sleep when they should sleep. And then they can't get up when they ideally should get up. So there's so much of indiscipline in your sleeping time, in your eating time. For example, Ayurveda says that you should never eat when you are not hungry, but people eat uh, like when it is time to eat. Now who said this is time to eat? It's the time, it's eight o'clock, it's my time to eat. It's three in the afternoon, it's time for my tea. 1.30, it's time for my lunch. Eight. 
13 nights or 9 it's time to my dinner. So they are hungry when they see the time. Absolutely wrong. Uh, a basic rule is that if you have not digested your earlier meal, one should never eat another meal. Meaning your tank is full, your stomach is full with food already. And you ate something which takes a long time to digest. For example, the red kidney bean takes almost 10 hours to digest. The black gram takes almost again 10 to 12 hours. The, the black lentil, the urad dal, again takes a very long time to digest. But if you eat an apple, it will take an, maybe half an hour to digest. If you eat an orange, maybe half an hour to digest. If you eat uh, fried, spicy, greased, lot of food, well, that will be difficult to digest. So if you have eaten something like that, which is greasy, which is oily, which um, was fried, so this means now next 10 hours you should not eat anything. What people don't understand these principles. Now this food which remains in your belly for a long time is sitting there, it's not digested because the digestive enzymes are not sufficient to do the job but you are still eating because your mind has been conditioned to eat or you saw a billboard of burger and you want a burger. You saw an advertisement of ice cream, now you want ice cream. You saw an ad, ad of a soda, ad of an ice cream shake ad of uh, somebody eating pizza and these all the food companies they make uh, their uh, marketing pictures so beautiful and so sumptuous that the moment you see your salivary glands are on overdrive and then you have to run out or order in these days of you know home deliveries people are ordering at 2 a.m in the night and asking for God knows what not. Yeah. So the whole system is totally ruined. What to eat, what not to eat, people have forgotten that. When to eat, when not to eat, people have forgotten that. Once a week you should be fasting technically just on water, people have forgotten that. And then your emotional slavery onto the things, sight, sound, smells, huh, taste. And because it has been repeated so many times, totally bound, burdened and bondaged with that behavior, that animalistic behavior. We are born with those reflexes. We are all born with some urges. Every human has that. But the difference in between an animal and a human is animal doesn't have the choice human has. But if human is not using that choice, then that human is exactly like an animal. So I would suggest you, one, to take the Bhagavad Gita. My commentary is there in English available, in, in Hindi. Whatever language is suitable, my videos are there. You can watch it if Hindi is okay with you. And just read and watch and... Uh, there is another concise Bhagavad Gita. It's like the Sanskrit shlokas are in English phonetics with the literal word meanings and in one small paragraph the whole gist of that shloka. So makes it little easy to carry, you know, that book. So just go into that. Meaning, be more wise. Be more intelligent. And about the, the rumblings which are there in the mind and the racings which the mind is doing all the times. For that, I would suggest two things. One is you do the pranavdhyan, where you take a long breath and you chant out loud this, the sound of Om. And you listen to that and you feel all the vibrations which come in the chest and the, the throat area and the temples region. And um, you take a deep breath, you do the chant of Om. You take a deep breath, you do the chant of longish Om. So you are elongating your breath, meaning taking more oxygen in. 
and you are exhaling for a longer time and that's taking out more carbon dioxide out of your lungs. The residual carbon dioxide is always going, nobody can take that out. Medically, it's impossible. But elongating your breath in, elongating your breath out. And that sound, that sound is going to bring so much of calmness to your brain, to your mind. Two, if your mind is a bit agitated and you are finding it difficult to deal with your own mind, then um, in my app, that's Amrit Varsha, there is a meditation section and then there is a, a guided method called Urja. In that, Kapalbhati Pranayam and Basrika Pranayam both are involved. And good for you, you are here. So in tomorrow morning, one of my teacher or one of my uh, Swami, Sanyasi, will teach you the correct method of doing Kapalbhati and uh, the Basrika Pranayam. So once you do that, you will come to know the power which gets unleashed in just doing that one method. And how quickly the mind becomes calm and you'll begin to enjoy your own company then. <laughs> and uh, the third thing which I would suggest is that you do yoga nidra. A yoga nidra is again a 40 minute practice. You do it while lying down. The instructions are there. You just close your eyes and listen to my voice. And I take you into this beautiful journey of uh, self-hypnosis. And it takes you to those zones which are present in you. But you have no inkling about it. So yoga nidra, reading the Gita... And doing these two methods, pranav or um, urja, or you know all these three, four things together, and you will see, and you will see the magic happening because the more you go deeper into these zones of dhyana and pranayam and chanting, a time comes in that. You know, like um, small kids, sometimes they make quite a ruckus. And they are just saying s some stupid nonsense stuff. And you are listening to all the stuff, but it's just a childish gibberish thing. So you don't want to react to that. Hmm? So what I teach is actually going to elevate you to that point where adults around you will seem like children blabbering and then you don't want to even react. We react because we get upset. Oh, how dare you say this to me? Oh, why are you saying this to me? Or you shouldn't say this to me. Or you should say this to me. But for a meditator, actually the whole world becomes like a child and doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Like that day, a child, just yesterday, you know, Dr. Digan's uh, son had given that letter for me, where he makes a small heart, you know, and makes a bigger heart. And the code is that I love to you and you love me. You know, and, and he's written that in, in beneath that smaller heart, it's me. And on the bigger heart, it's Guru Ma. You know, coded language. Now, that's the way. He's just making a, a symbol of heart, right? But the gesture was beautiful. You know, that gesture is, is so meaningful and so beautiful. But say if a grown-up man gifts this hand um, doodling and makes a heart and writes for you and gives it to his wife or girlfriend, oh, he'll get slapped. <laughs> what is this nonsense? Because you should be gifting me a diamond or a solitaire or 
um, at least times a night. What is this nonsense? When a child says something, you like it. So I believe when you do your spiritual practices, your sadhana, you become like that wise individual. And then for you, the whole world around you, whether family or friends or relative or neighbors, are like those small children who are not yet exposed to intelligence. Say so if a child gets very angry and says some harsh things to you, you don't get bothered. Oh, it's just a child. You know, just a child. But if an adult begins to say, use cuss words and abuse you, would you say just a child? No, you won't. You say, oh, let me teach you a lesson. You say this to me, I say this to you. You know, tit for tat will be happening. For every stone thrown, you will be throwing a rock onto them. But if it is a child, you don't bother. Why we get troubled? Because we give too much importance to people and to their behavior and to their language. When you are so busy within you, you are mastering your own breaths, you are mastering your own mind, and you have no time left to, to worry about who said what. No, no time. No time. So when we give um, attention and importance to people around us. We are giving our liberty and freedom and peace of mind in their hands. <laughs> when you begin to give attention to your own mind and you mind your mind, then you don't mind. But normally you mind others' mind. That's why the other minds and you also mind. So it is better to mind your own mind. And then for others, don't mind, whatever. So it's just about breaking those patterns which we have developed. Unknowingly, unconsciously. I give you one Buddha story because you come here after reading my Buddha book. So, one time a rich man came to see Gautam Buddha in this Sravasti Vihar. Buddha was sitting under the tree, calm, collected, meditative. This rich man comes in, bows, sits down. And now Buddha is not speaking anything or looking towards him. So he's waiting that whenever he opens his eyes and then he can have a conversation. But Buddha was like having a half eye opened. And this rich man was with a very disturbed monkey mind. So he's moving his toes, he's moving his hands, he's moving his shoulders, he's just fidgeting, he's just moving. After a time, he tried to still his body, but he's getting very restless that why isn't Buddha talking? And finally Buddha spoke. He said, why are you moving your toes? He said, no, I'm not. Buddha said to Anand, did you see him moving his toes? Anand said, yes, master. He had been moving his toes and feet and hands and he couldn't sit silently. And the rich man said, was I, really? He said, just look. And he was still moving his toes. That's how most of for your... Um, Mind is behaving, your mind is thinking and you are not aware. Your mind is racing and rushing in your past memories or the future plannings and you are not aware. And your mind is hating someone and you are not aware. And your mind is enslaved to somebody and you are not aware. And your mind is enslaved to a certain way of lifestyle and you are not aware because you are bound with your habits. 
you are bound with the patterns the way you think the way you eat the way you talk the way you walk like i remember one person this ashram was coming up and the person met me and and he said uh, i i was taking questions i said if anybody has question he raised his hand he said i have a question i said what's the question he said your showers are not good <laughs> the showers are not good I said okay mm mm-hmm. that was the question and another time somebody said this ashram is so beautiful so modern but one thing is missing and that is there is no television in the rooms i said great thank you very much he said aren't you planning to put put one you know tv there should be a television we want to be connected with the world i said then why the hell you were here be in the world i never asked you to come here i had another patel coming to me who has i think so some 50 hotels in usa and he said guru ma i can um donate televisions you know the thin ones the new ones for all the places and everything is there but there's no television i can give that he offered no not just suggested he offered and i said thank you very much here i am trying to cut you out of the world and here you want to bring all that nonsense uh, in the name of television so what kind of question is that but then i don't mind such questions <laughs> cuz i know how to just ignore or laugh it off or very politely say thank you for your offer but thank you very much thanks but not thanks being alone being in sadhana helps you to first address what kind of mental slavery you have created so i would give you some homework that maybe tomorrow you just sit down but after doing the urja after doing yog nidra once you have done all those two three things which i am asking you so maybe day after or whenever just sit down with a very calm collected breath very very calm collected breath without being picky or biased just look in your mind make a list what are those things without which you can't be happy which you want to be there with you all the times what's the things which make you sad then create a list of all those things people or objects or whatever so the point is we are not familiar with the functioning of our own mind like that rich man was not aware of his toes which he was twiddling all the time we are not aware of the mind we are not aware of our emotions we are not aware about our desires we are not aware about our own urges and that's what makes us a dog conditioned and we can be human by being human by observing all this so explore these things what i am asking you to do and then slowly you will begin to see and then the futility of doing um of not doing a stuff and then the wisdom okay this is great and good this enhances my peace and silence and intelligence this is good this is which is destroying my peace and silence so it's better to be away like when the covid was there everybody was masking why that was good for you <laughs> 